This is Humble Woman Ministries, and thank goodness it's fall. I happen to love the fall. I love it. I love the cooler weather. I love when the leaves start changing colors. I love sweaters. I love pumpkin spice lattes. I love that smell. I love the smell of the pumpkin spice and the cinnamon and the nutmeg. I just absolutely love it. And, you know, there's pumpkin spice stuff everywhere. I went to the grocery store with my daughter and I got roped into buying pumpkin spice bagels, pumpkin spice donuts, and pumpkin spice cereal of all things. So we are all pumpkin spiced out over here at the Humble Woman Ministries house for sure. But I was actually started thinking about, you know, the smell. I mean, the smell of fall is, like I said, one of my favorites, the pumpkin spice, the the crisp autumn air, the uh, burning of wood. I can smell the neighbors, you know, burning wood in their fireplace. And I just, I just love it. And, um, you know, it made me think of uh, incense that's mentioned in the Bible. We, um, we see incense in Revelation. Uh, and, and that one came to my head right away is the prayers going up like incense to God. And uh, so I wanted to do a little bit of study uh, regarding incense and um, that sort of thing with you guys. So I really um, I'm glad that you're here to join me today. I wanted to start with a really quick um, Bible verse and let's read that together and then we'll get into the significance of incense and that sort of thing. So this is Psalm 141, and I've been reading this um, a lot lately, um, and I wanted to share it with you. I'm going to read the whole thing. It's a Psalm of David, and it goes, I call to you, Lord, come quickly to me. Hear me when I call you. May my prayer be set before you like incense. May the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not let my heart be drawn to what is evil, so that I take part in wicked deeds, along with those who are evildoers. Do not let me eat their delicacies. Let a righteous man strike me. That is a kindness. Let him rebuke me. That is oil on my head. My head will not refuse it, for my prayer will still be against the deeds of evildoers. Their rulers will be thrown down from the cliffs, and the wicked will learn that my words were well spoken. They will say, As one plows and breaks up the earth, so our bones have been scattered at the mouth of the grave. But my eyes are fixed on you, Sovereign Lord. In you I take refuge. Do not give me over to death. Keep me safe from the traps set by evildoers, from the snares that they have laid for me. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I pass by in safety. And again, in Revelation 5, we see it says, Then I saw the Lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by four living creatures, and the elders. The Lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all of the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne, and when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Amen. So I think it's very noteworthy that the scriptures are clear that the fragrant fumes that ascended from the incense represented prayers of godly people, those people who were in covenant with God. In the psalm we read, Psalm 141, it says, Let my prayer be set forth as incense before you. The book of Revelation unquestionably indicates 
that incense is symbolic of the prayers of the saints. We just read that in Revelation 5. And I was also reading about the Day of Atonement. Here we see in Leviticus 16.11, it says, Aaron shall bring the bull for his own sin offering to make atonement for himself and his household. And he is to slaughter the bull for his own sin offering. He is to take a censer full of burning coals from the altar before the Lord and two handfuls a finely ground fragrant incense and take them behind the curtain. He is to put the incense on the fire before the Lord, and the smoke of the incense will conceal the atonement cover before the tablets of the covenant law, so that he will not die. He is to take some of the bull's blood and with his finger sprinkle it on the front of the atonement cover. Then he shall sprinkle some of it with his finger seven times before the atonement cover. So after reading about Aaron's instructions, after sacrificing the bull, how to sprinkle the blood and to light the incense, we can see that incense not only represents the prayers of the saints, but it also represents the holiness of God. So um, as far as the Day of Atonement is concerned, um, each year on the Day of Atonement, uh, at least in Old Testament times, the priest would take a censer of coals, which is like a small shovel, and he'd take it uh, from the brazen altar, which was situated in the court outside of the holy place. And it's important to note that the altar was actually where the animals were sacrificed. Uh, and their blood was the atonement for the sins of the people of Israel. So together with these burning coals on the censer, the high priest would take handfuls of incense. And he passed through the holy place beyond the veil into the Holy of Holies in the temple. And there he would put the incense upon the flaming coals. And the mercy seat was the covering of the Ark of the Covenant, and the testimony refers to the tablets of stone within the Ark, upon which were inscribed the Ten Commandments. So all of this is just really, really meaningful, and it's definitely worth a in-depth study. Uh, it gets very, very um, contemplative and symbolic, the whole temple set up, and the Holy of Holies, and the curtain that... that uh, separated the court from the innermost parts of the temple and the sacrifice is very very interesting so on each side of the mercy seat were cherubim these are uh, winged creatures uh, we might think of you know cupids on valentine's day but i really doubt that's actually what they look like i don't know uh, so the wings of these cherubim were stretched towards one another thus overshadowing the mercy seat and of this sacred place, the Lord says, Here I will meet with you, and I will commune with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all the things which I will give you in commandment unto the children of Israel. We read this in Exodus 25, 22. So the sweet smelling smoke filled the area, obscuring the mercy seat and the representation of the presence of God. And this symbolized absolute holiness of God in contrast to the sinfulness of man. And it's crucial that we understand that our Creator is a perfectly holy being and that we are marred by sin. Hence there is a need for a method of reconciliation. And in the Old Testament by its typological representations, prepared the way for appreciating this reality. And in connection with this ritual, the high priest also sprinkled the blood of a bull seven times before the mercy seat. And this offering was for the sins of the priest and his family. A second ritual of similar importance was for the people in general. So there is another point about incense that is crucial. There is a relationship between the use of incense and the application of blood. And as observed earlier, the incense was typical of the prayers of the saints. It was an act of faith on the part of the people of God. The shedding of blood pictured the Savior's eventual death. And by combining these two elements, therefore, sets forth the image of the cooperative affinity 
between Christ's blood on our behalf and our prayers to God. The efficiency of our prayers is dependent upon the shedding of the Lord's blood. And the power of that blood for the Christian must be accessed by prayer. So this helps us to reflect then on the necessity and the power of prayer. And so, in some strange way, the smell of the fall, the pumpkin spice, reminds me of the incense of our prayers, reminds me of the blood atonement of Jesus Christ, and reminds me of uh, our salvation. And I just wanted to share that with you, and uh, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. If so, uh, please be sure to subscribe and uh, like this video. And uh, God bless you all. And thank you for watching my video today.